and welcome to Piper Hustle. My name is Chip. My name is Aaron. I love to quilt and sew and I, well, actually Fiber Hustle has made its first TikTok and I'm so excited. Chip has made his first TikTok. I don't think I had any part of it. Yes, you did, Fiber Hustle. Oh, but I'm still very excited about it. Three, there's three TikToks on, on, on Fiber Hustle, Fiber Hustle TikTok. I should subscribe. I like to knit and crochet and I have not subscribed to TikTok yet. And my voice just cracked. And you, you like to watch. You do. Episode 37 of Fiber Hustle. Hello, hustlers. Cheers. Well, here. Cheers. Cheers. I know it's been a minute, but we're here. We we're are so glad you tuned in to your favorite two male knitter and quilting podcasters who live in this house. Oh, you had to quantify it. I mean, like, come on, you could have just stopped your favorite. I bet, but apparently there's other ones out there. In this house. <laughs> yeah, in the, yes, in this house, exactly. Streaming to you live in 4K, your favorite, uh, us. <laughs> your favorite, your favorite us. We're just, we're, we're yours. Yes, yeah, so, uh, Aaron has been on my case, and I will have you know, he has been chewing at the bit to get back onto the Fiber Hustle set and just... Zen with you. I have. I've, I've missed everyone, and I'm I'm glad we're doing this today. Yeah, so let's take care of business. We have some. Let's start out with some ketchup. We're going to move on until uh, for you made that, and then what comes after that? We got you made that. We got that. show notes. We got, we got what are you makings. We have a little ketchup. We have some had the habits, all that good stuff. And big smiles because we're here to brighten your day. Did you say you want to move on to you made that or are we going to do catch up? No, I was just telling you, know, giving the highlights. What to expect? Oh, I mean, uh, here, I need to move over because I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting out of frame and I, you know, like, hey. <laughs> or am I just growing more that I'm pushing you out of frame? <laughs> Life happens. So what's been happening? <laughs> It's not you, dear. It's not you, dear, that's out of frame. It's me that's oh. becoming more of the frame. Oh, so tell me your life story in under cue a the, Cue the Lizzo. Give, <laughs> give, me the, give me the elevator pitch. Uh, last few months, last month, Chip got me a film school class for a month. It's called Monthly. So I did that. He got it to me for my birthday. And who is it with? Uh, Casey Neistat. I don't know if uh, some of you in YouTube world might know uh, Casey Neistat from his vlogging and stuff like that on YouTube. So, this... but what is it? What is it? So it's a film. It's a it's a month long film school, and yes. it's like all of the things that Casey Neistat had wished he had known on the get go from when he started making videos. Correct. And I'll tell you, this one was like sweating. He originally told me about this the class and he's like, wow, they're doing this class and I'd love to do it. But he was just like, I don't know if I want, I don't know if I'm up for this because, you know, it's like a little bit of pressure. And once he got into it, he loved it. Oh, I did love it. It was a, it was a great class. It was like literally one month. Uh, you watch some videos, how to use your gear. And I did it more, not for the gear, but for the actual storytelling of videos because I mean, I think I'm decent at editing and stuff like that, but uh, my storytelling needs some work, just like right now. So um, my first uh, story, our little film, was shot on the phone, and it was about birding. And I was like, I'm going to try birding this year. And uh, that was, it was good. I went out on a very foggy day, didn't see many <laughs> to look birds. For birds. So the so first, the, wait, wait, so the first one is you just shoot. You're not supposed to use any high-tech Anything, it's just like, hey, low tech, use what you've got in your pocket, use your phone, and tell a story with it. And it was very spontaneous. Like you had to look at something around your room or around you that you wanted to tell a story about and just make it happen. So it wasn't like mapping things out or whatever. Then the second one, if you had different gear or like SDS, S, DSLR. DSLR cameras, you could use that. I was like, and they said, uh, the class was more uh, find something you love that you know you can just talk about for a while. And I was like, okay. I was like, either I'm going to do like drumming or guitaring or knitting. And I chose knitting. So then I know I started to make uh, my, I made my intro. I made, it looked classy and great. And I was getting going. And then I got COVID. <laughs> 
and I was not asymptomatic. I was the opposite of asymptomatic. I was in bed for a long time. Um, he wasn't down for the count. He was just definitely, he had a cold. For, for three days. I, yeah, I haven't called off work, though, in years. And I had to call off work because I had, like, the fever of 101 for, like, three days. But then... Then I was fine, but it just took forever to get rid of the tiredness. We're not going to go into that whole thing. It was just like, I'm just happy that you did not get it. And how did that happen? You slept downstairs. For how long? Ten days. On the couch? Yeah. I deserve to have the bed to myself. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I'm still, you know, one of the lucky ones. I've made it through uh, so far. I would pay a hundred bucks to know where I got it. Because we have been so safe. But, I mean, that's... It just happened, and I'm glad nobody I knew or was around got it. Anyways, yeah, so that sucked. I didn't get to finish my video because of that, and that's why my beard is so big, because I started my video with a bigger beard, because I was like, well, if I finish the video, I don't want to be like big beard, short beard, or no beard. So I really need to go and finish the video and then get back to it. But the intro... I'm pretty proud of. If I could show you guys, I would. I don't think there's a way to do it. I don't know. Um, what else do you have? A, I have like one more thing after you. Do you, you got a start? couple of things. I, I somehow spring is in the air. I got into wind spinners. I have no idea how this happened. So a couple of weeks ago, I was just on the internet searching. And I have wind chimes around the yard. Chip thinks I have too many. Whatever. How but, many do you have? I think he has like six. There's probably six different wind chimes in different parts of the yard because I love that kind of stuff. In a 1,200 square foot house footprint, there are six wind chimes and no wind. In fairness, you've only seen one because you don't leave the house and you only go into this little corner. So you even <laughs> you don't you haven't even seen the ones that are I, on the other side of the yard. I can hear them all the way <laughs> when it blows. <laughs> yes, holding that one back. So yeah. Um, I bought a wind feature spinner for when the wind goes. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is pretty awesome. A feature. A feature. It's a wind feature. Then suddenly I ordered two more and I'm like, what am I doing? And I love them and they're bringing me a little bit of joy. And I'm like, am I going to be that weird person that has all these things that are just... Did you remember the movie Twister? When they see Aunt... What is her name? Not Aunt B. That's Andy Griffith. And something from Twister. And she has all those things in her front yard. I was like, am I going to be that person? I think I might be. Let me know. Give me for, uh, fair warning. If we start, we're going to have garden gnomes all over the place. No, we will not have garden gnomes yet. And the last thing is Seamus hasn't been feeling very well. We won't get into the whole thing, but uh, he... Uh, he was licking himself a lot. He was. We thought he was licking his front, and that is a troublesome area that he has had uh, in the past. And he's had to go to a procedure to make sure that he would urinate and like he would be healthy. Aaron took him to the vet because he was obsessively cleaning himself, and they didn't find anything. They said everything looked clear, and but we br brought him home. And unfortunately, he kept at it. But then we recognized, well, hey, put our glasses on. It it's wasn't uh, it wasn't his front. It was his his near front. And so then Aaron had to take him back to the to the vet. And yeah, there was a, an issue like a gland issue that had to be taken care of. <laughs> and so he he did very well at the vet and has since been kind of funky about his uh he's kind of off his diet and he's not eating that's he's the not problem really, he's not really eating and like so the doctor said take him off his uh his regular or his medicine and he only had like a couple of days left so hopefully keep your fingers crossed uh his appetite comes back because um otherwise he's been really healthy he's just he's lovey he's he's walking around he's he's normal but we don't have thin cats. We're not gonna have a thin cat. We're not thin. <laughs> there was like, he's so big. I'm like, yes, he is. And he's so well behaved. I'm like, yes, he is. I know. He's the greatest cat in the world. Yeah. So, yeah. So, film school, COVID, garden spinners, features. Excuse me, they're features. <laughs> the garden feature. Is anybody else in the garden features? Call me. <laughs> we'll do a little like garden feature comparison. And Seamus. <laughs> and Seamus, yes, exactly. So, what, uh, um, anything else? 
And that's all for me. All right, I'm gonna breeze through this. So I've taken uh, a couple of months off after my contract ended at my J-O-B um, late in the fall, early in the fall. And so it's time, it's time to get back into the job market for me. So I'm busy doing that and had a, had a couple of interviews. I haven't found the right fit yet, but things are happening. Um, in the meantime, I am, believe it or not, on the quilt stream, the other channel that is all about quilting. Dude, I have done 27 episodes already. You're 10 away from doing as many episodes as Fiber Hustle's And done. this month marks Fiber Hustle's four-year uh, four anniversary. Is it really? Yes. And we only have 37 episodes? <laughs> So it's fiber hustle, but we like to call it a crawl, a fiber crawl. Oh my gosh. Well, good for us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good for us. So um, for those of you who have been joining, I'm really excited that uh, you've been on this journey with me. I am. I was going twice a week, and that was just like it was a heavy, heavy pace that I just couldn't keep up with. That I mean, like... Especially going live twice a week. And it's live. And so anything can happen, and it's like sometimes... You know, I'm pushing buttons, doing, being the cameraman, being the content, and then moderating with the room. And I've had some great moderators on the live sessions. So thank you to, you know who you are. Uh, thank you. And I love it. The quilt stream is up and at them, and it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. And I appreciate, I really appreciate that you've allowed me the time to get the bugs out, to understand what it means to do. Because now that I'm getting back into the J-O-B, yeah. you know, I need, you know, I just want to be able to go, boom, I can do it. And I think I'm there. All right, so then the next thing that uh, I've got cooking is these, I mean, like you knitters, you knitters, are this amazing community that loves to like get together on Zoom and do all of your knit socials. And I'm like, I was feeling left out at the party. And I was like, you know what? We need one for uh, quilters and sewers. So uh, I think we've had two or three now, but every other week we're gonna be doing, uh, I'm gonna be hosting um, social, socials and over on Zoom. And so uh, it starts about eight o'clock Eastern, five o'clock Pacific. And it lasts generally about two or three hours. Come early, come late. Well, don't come early because I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna start it early. But um, yeah, just, I mean, like if you can only spend 30 minutes with us or you can spend the entire time, you're more than welcome. It's a really great place to get tips, to get feedback on any of your designs that you're working on, and generally just be in the in the social. And I'll say it for them, this is a sewing group. <laughs> so don't come in with your knitting needles and stuff because this is for the sewers. We have- Sewist, blah, blah, blah. We have Aunt Kravitz, uh, our, our Mrs. Kravitz. Uh, Susan, you know who mm. you are. She's threatened that she was gonna come in and knitting and I told her she was gonna get the boot. <laughs> she's gonna get the boot. So yeah, if you wanna do that, I'm speaking for you for some reason. Yeah. Uh, follow the quilt stream on Instagram. He posts uh, a few days before, I think the day before Usually that you do Usually one or two days before to say, hey, Zoom remind link. you, and they have the, the meeting uh, ID and the, the passcode, and it's a lot of oh. that. And then the big thing that I wanna share with and remind you if you haven't already heard is the Adventurer's Compass Quilt Along that I am co-hosting with uh, the Curly Seams podcast and the Wool Patch, and that's Tracy, Emma, and Stuart, and I couldn't be more excited about it. We are going to be working on Mar uh, Mariner's compasses, and it's gonna be using a technique from um, from Robin Long. This is the, uh, the pattern that I'm gonna be working on. Why don't I just show you, take it out of the plastic so it's not all shiny. But um, it's a Mariner's compass, and she, Robin Long over at Robin um, Ruth Designs, she has so many patterns. There's a paid patterns, there are free patterns, but the, um, the trick to this is that there's no paper piecing and you could do either a 16 point skinny or fat compass. So you would buy one of these books um, 
for whichever pattern that you choose. So when you're looking at our patterns over at RobinRuthDesigns.com, you get 10% off your complete order uh, through the end of March. And you can do the, uh, the Fat Robin, which is a 16 point compass, and you can do it in small all the way into a really big compass. Or you can do the Skinny, which is again a 16 point compass, or you can go to a 32 point compass and I love it. It's, it's all based on her technique that she designed and it's using some acrylic rulers, which are going to be hard to see. <laughs> um, I already took, I already peeled the paper off the back, so I was that excited. But there's been many of us who purchased these and just actually didn't get to the project yet. So this is going to be a nice, uh, a nice way to learn the technique and it's going to start on March 26th. It's being hosted on Facebook. So look in the, in the, the show notes and you can get all the sign up link and then you can get the link to RobinRuthDesigns.com and I'm telling you, she, I mean, I bought when she had, uh, when do you have? How many do I have? <laughs> yes. I don't know. It's like trading cards. I mean, like they are like trading cards. I mean, like she has so many patterns and like this one, like this is the one that really uh, like gets everybody is this one, uh, her daughter, I believe it's her daughter or daughter, daughter-in-law worked for Elon Musk and she uh, made this design and called it for Elon. And it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous. And there's different size and different types of Mariner's compass, but I'm going to be choosing this big, huge medallion to do. I mean, there's just, there's just all kinds that you could possibly do. So if you really wanted to get, um, intricate there's all of these this one is a nice timepiece i think that's a lot of fun i mean you can go the timepiece one is fun oh uh, i love actually i actually love this one too and i wish um i could find a way to make a little elephant on on top of it or uh, below it um just so like have his have his trunk and oh. then have all these Ooh. little things snark it <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what is it? <laughs> it's the, like snark it. Yeah. <laughs> so, was that Carol? That so was Tim, Carol Burnett, Tim Conway. Conway. When there's two, there's two <laughs> side when they were doing would come Mamba. out. Yes. Um, um, and then <laughs> this is actually another one that I just thought was so pretty that this is one that I would love to do. So, yeah, I mean, if you are if you haven't already heard about it, like, or if you're on the fence, I would say go use the discount. It's uh, it's MCQA10, and so it's Mar Mariner's Compass uh, Quilt Along 10. That's the uh, the coupon code, and you get 10% off your entire order. We start on March 26th, and it's going to last for two months, I believe, uh, end of May. And then there's going to be two training sessions. Um, there's going to be a kickoff meeting every Saturday. We're going to get together <clears throat> on a very casual basis and just kind of get updates on where people are. I want you guys to join. It That's would be fun. so much fun. That sounds so, fun. Yeah, so between the quilt stream, the socials on Zoom, and the quilt along, I've been busy. <laughs> you have been busy. We've both been busy. All right, so any last minute things you want to get on the catch up? I don't think so. Vogue Knitting Live is going to be here in a few weeks. So if you're going to Vogue Knitting Live, uh, I think we're going to be there. I it's like literally a mile down the road from our house. So we there's already no have, reason for us to be there. We already sent in our proof of uh, vaccination. Vaccination. We got our we'll probably be there Saturday because we didn't think about it. S that Sunday, we're going to the Van Gogh exhibit here in Seattle, which yeah, I forgot about. It's like, oh, no. I was like, OK, we only need really one day at Bogue Nitty Live, I think so. Well, all I know is that I'm supposed to show up so I can catch yarn that they're going to cut. And That's on release. Sundays, though. All right, so then we'll change our tickets to Van Gogh. Can you do that? I'm sure you can. We'll look into it. Whatever, but we're going to Vogue Knitting Live, and if we see you there, say hi. Let's get our, let's our, get, we'll make a TikTok. <laughs> we'll make a TikTok. <laughs> we'll make a knitting there. TikTok. Oh my gosh. Did I say TikTok? TikTok. Tit yes, one of the TikToks. TikTok. 
<laughs> All right, so Aaron. Yeah, what's up? You made that? I did. So I do have uh, just a couple finished objects. This is the Melting Marl, Sh Melting Marl Shaw by Stephen West. You might have to block your face real quick or just grab the other side. It looks like there's just one string. So this is one gorgeous and I am using nothing but scrap yarn. I'm gonna do a little cough real quick. <coughs> Turn my head. Okay. So yeah, this is a Melty Mar by Stephen West. Now, uh, I, since Black Friday, ordered, ordered just a tiny yarn at Black Friday, and I said, I really need to go through my stash and my little yarn balls and just like use what I actually have instead of buying new yarn. So I went into my stash. This is, the way you get this is by holding two fingering weights together. Then you, like if you hold two together, you drop one, you pick one up, then you knit a little bit. That way you get that Morrow effect, which actually makes a DK weight style since you're holding two fingerings together. The majority of this, is probably serial knitters yarn. I mean, some of these balls were like that big, then some of them I had half a skein, and it's just 100% gorgeous. Like, I know this is like serial knitters, uh, most, of, you know what, all of it is serial knitters except for just a few balls. I think there might be some trilogy yarns. There's some pink up here that I ran out of it's that really I soft. loved. And what I was gonna do is try to do a fade of the same color, but then you start running out of yarn can I lay it down here, right here? Yeah, there we go. So yeah, I wanted to try like do uh, like three rows with this color, then drop it, then eventually come back in with this color, then kind of do dun dun dun. Which you can kind of tell I did a little bit here, like this bluish aqua color, then a the bluish aqua color, but then you just kind of run out. Um, it's all stock and net stitch, so it's definitely not complicated. Is it my favorite shawl in the world? No. Do I love the color it made? Yes. I think it should be up there. Um, it should be. It's a. I could have made it much bigger. It's a little bit smaller for me so this might be a gift I do love it but there's n totally knit it if you want to do some scrap yarn stuff you probably look marvelous in it yeah if you have all the scrap yarn just make this it's so easy just do it but then like halfway through it you're like okay I'm literally doing the exact same thing so if you like to do to sit on the couch and watch some TV and knit I don't know why I knit like this with my thumbs that's more video game uh, this is is the shawl for you. I'm gonna try to rock it, see what I can do, but I think I should have made it a little bit longer if it was for me. I'll take it. Will, do you want, will you wear it? Will you wear it? When I leave the house. So you're not gonna wear it. Which means, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I will take care of it. Well, I, I know you will take care of it. I just wanna make sure that somebody <laughs> no, I actually wears it. I absolutely will wear it. I, I, I mean, especially, um, you know, like when you're in, when you're in a room and it's just like you just cannot get warm and even during the summer Like here in, in Seattle, we don't have AC, but when you're at work You're definitely like sometimes you're just like oh my god. They've got it on power um, Air conditioning and power ranger on power ranger yeah. and you're like uh, and then unfortunately you, you're the one that gets stuck underneath the vent and it's just blowing on you <laughs> So I yeah. love that though. Oh, I don't I love being chilly. I don't know why I rather way be so, chilly yeah. than So yeah. So if you're feeling generous, um, I'm happy to have it. I will. Then it's yours. But yeah, super easily pa easy pattern. What's this? I know there was a class. Don't look at that. I know there was a class he released uh, online that went through marling and stuff for different shawls and sweaters. I didn't take the class, but I did get this one. I did purchase his Mr. West. Shaw, yes, his shawl. How to knit a shawl class, uh, and I purchased that right when I started to have COVID, and then I started to watch it, and I just couldn't watch it. So I really need to go back to it because it looked like it was going to be super helpful to help you design shawls. And I was like, who just releases secrets like this? You know what? I, I have. I, I I've eavesdropped uh, so many times, and I've heard so many people that have said what a wonderful instructor he is. He is. I think he, well, from, I've never, in person, we've never had an interaction, but from just like his instruction videos and stuff, I think, I think they're wonderful. I know there's a lot of Stephen West fanboys out there, Stephen West people that are kind of like, uh, over it, but for me, I just like 
a lot of things that he comes with. Of course, there's some wackadoo stuff, but I mean, a lot of his stuff I think is just wonderful, especially to dab and put your toe in the pool for things that you've never done instead of going, like I know he has some brioche patterns that are pretty easy. I'm not a brioche fan, that's why I haven't done it yet, but everybody's like, oh, if you're gonna try brioche, try some of his stuff first, because he's really good at explaining it, and it's not that hard, instead of going to something that's brioche that's just gonna overwhelm you and make you rage quit and throw it across the room. And you know what I, lo I, lo I respect about him is that he is accessible, where if you reach out to him, he actually, you're gonna get Stephen West, and Yes, I mean, like he he is running his his business, and he I'm sure he's very very busy and gets inundated with requests, and he's very personable. And actually, I mean, that's why I liked um, kind of tying it to Robin Long. Um, she was very receptive towards us too. Last year when we did a quote along, the designer, um, yeah, she was just too busy to interact. And Robin Long, she was like aces for us, and. We're not making anything by you buying her pattern or her rulers, which you do need to do this quote along. Uh, but it just, it feels nice when you're working with any kind of designer and they actually say, I see you. And and, and you feel that they matter. Mm -hmm. It's or true. Or that you matter. It's true. And so yeah, so I love Stephen West. And I mean, I know when I first saw him at Vogue, the first time I ever saw him was at Vogue Knitting Live. Yeah, we did and I him. was like, who is this? <laughs> who is this monster man? Cause and, he's like six, five, six, four, something like that. And it was, and like, I mean like he, if there is, he's kind of like um, wearing rhinestones. He's gonna catch every bit of light in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He is a and, presence. Like, it's just like, he's somebody that you just, you can't help but smile and learn something from. True. I like the way you put that. I do. And this is the shot. I'm on a roll. This is the shot. It would be a nice blanket though. I think if, if you like finish the other half in the round, it'd be a great blanket. So use up that those little bits of scrap yarn, yarn that you guys have and give it a try. Again, I like it. It's just, I don't know if it's gonna fit me. Oh, I'm sorry. You... I thought we already made this deal. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is tra we didn't, didn't Thank make you. this transaction. Thank you. Um, you don't have any, you made that, right? Everything I've got is in, in, in flux. Okay, so then I have some more stuff for you. And you're gonna be like, what? Aaron, you're like knitting socks? Yeah, I am, because uh, I- I've a... worked my ways. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of doctor's appointments a few months ago. So I was like, well, what do I work on? So I just take like a, a sock, some 2.25 millimeter needles, some yarn in there. I would just knit socks in like waiting rooms. I'm fine. It was just follow up. So, fine so uh, let's, let's just call this the sock shock. Sock shock. <laughs> sock, sock shock. shock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we're shocked that he actually loves making socks. This is somebody. No, I didn't say love. Somebody who does socks now who said he would never. There it is. Sock shock. Sock shock. <laughs> and then your hair just goes up and all that. So these, I finally tried Knit Picks Felici, uh, one of those Black Friday ones that I did order. And this is the colorway of Summer Nights. That is fun. Summer loving. Just kidding. That song drives me insane. But yes, these uh, are super fun. They're self striped. You know what? Whenever I sew socks, Sure. Show, show socks. Uh, they look like a baggy hot mess, and everybody else shows shows their socks, seashells, seashells by the seashore, um, and they look all tight and nice and stuff. And mine always look like a hot mess for some reason. Um, but yeah, these are Knit Picks Felici. I did these Magic Loop style on 2.25 millimeter needles. Uh, wish I would have made the rib a little bit longer, but um, I. I guess I've already worn them, so maybe that's why they're a little bit stretched out. But uh, I got the fit pretty much perfect. This could go up probably a little bit, but I wasn't sure. Still working out the formula, how much I can actually use on my foot. Um, Are these shorties? No, they're mediumies. <laughs> mediumies? <laughs> it's a mediumies, uh, an actual word. So yeah, that's one pair. And then I was working on these as a Peyton's Croy, and the colorway of these is, it was Cascade something, give me a second. These are Cascade colors, and I was knitting these for me, and he looked over, he goes, I like those. I was like, okay, great, that's fun. They was like, can I have them? Just like the Shaw. 
I said, yes, you can. They'll go so with the Shaw. They will go with the Shaw. So um, every man knows Peyton's Croy. You can go to your local Michaels or Joann's and buy them. Um, again, not buying any new yarn. This was in my stash. And one thing about Peyton's Croy is uh, their yarn is really thick and wooly. So it's going to be hard to rub through this and have any issues because, like, most sock yarn is like this, and this just feels a little bit, not thinner, but a little bit thinner, and this doesn't just feel just like wooly, and it's, it's a man sock. That was gross, what I just said. So yeah, and I finished these, and the chip hasn't even tried them on yet. So on the ground. Now? I'm gonna put them on you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, now. Nah. No, hopefully you will enjoy these. I mean, I love, I love uh, the socks. Do you want to, do you want to, do you guys want some, some honest to goodness truth, whether or not they're going to work? Why are you going to do it? I'll do it. Okay, let's do it. Do you want the left one or right one? Uh, whichever is easiest for the fitter. The fitter, okay. Here we go. Oh, make sure that doesn't fall off. Oh, why'd you take it off inside out? Oh, isn't it just, okay, you ready for this? That's how you take all of your clothes off. Inside out? Let's see, okay. Oh, oh it does, it actually fits right. Look at this. Yeah, we'll do this one. Do this one too. And don't do it inside out. Do <laughs> it's gonna be it's a warm day, so you're probably not gonna keep these on very long. Today. Actually, they're not. They're not. Okay, they're cozy. <gasps> and do they come up the leg enough? And one more. Actually, they do. Oh, what a! They look perfect on you. It's like synchronized swimming. So these are the socks that I made. They really look. They just look handsome on you. And fix no, fix the left one. This what's wrong with it? The heel is a little weird. Oh. Huh, there you go. No, now you go. Okay. So yeah, ta-da! It had to be shoes, socks. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for doing that. Do you don't bump your head. Oh. Um one thing I'm also thinking about is I am, I'm not going to show, I have a pair oh. on the needles now that I'm doing 64 stitches instead of 72 because sometimes they do feel a little bit baggy on my foot. So I want to see if I do 64, if I just rip right through it like Hulk or they actually, I should keep 72. So we're, we're playing with that formula. Do those feel baggy or at all? Or? What I will say is I, what I really like about, I tend to buy socks uh, on Chipazon and all of these are tend to be nylon and I will wear the socks, you know, throughout the entire day. And you know, it's like they just rub your legs. And at the end of the day, it's just like, you can't wait to get your socks off. These feel like, I mean, like comfy. Like I don't feel like the nylon, the nylon ones just rub you. Um, these are usually, I think these are, those might be 20% nylon, 10%, 20. 80% wool, 20% nylon. I don't have the ball band with me, so we'll have to look at it. But I mean, at the foot of the bed, I have all, I, I know where I keep my, my used socks. They're all at the foot of the bed underneath the blanket because I take my socks off at night when I'm, when I'm, you know, 10 minutes in bed and I'm like, oh yeah, socks. <laughs> like, get, get them. Because I can't sleep with socks on. But I'm telling you, I would much rather have these. These are so comfy. Good. Now, I've never worn, um, handmade socks with proper shoes yet. <laughs> oh. So we're gonna give it that test. I guess it depends what size of shoe you wear too. Like a boot I think would be better than wearing it with like a, a tennis shoe. Because it would be rubbed different. Maybe. I don't know. I don't wear we'll boots. Find, we'll, 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 find, we'll find out. But yeah, uh, the last thing I have, um, this is more of a, it has, it's, it has to do with socks. Uh, I went over to my friend Rob's house many months ago. He's my friend too. He's my friend. He's, he's a quilter and a knitter. He's all our friends. He rides both sides of the fence. He does. And our friend Jeff was there as well. And he had a cranker for your socks. So uh, I brought over this skein of super Super fine yarn co uh, Sarah our friend Sarah sent us this last year and I said I know the perfect uh, 
sock winder test yes the yarn. first sock winder test yarn that i want to use and we made this into a big tube i haven't done anything with it but look at that color i think this might be i just sent her a message today and she she was away so uh it could be boozy cherry it's a super fine yarn co they're in cleveland ohio ohio and it's just gorgeous i just need to figure out um how to make this into this which but you may not want to because this could be a gift so when my niece was maybe six years old um and my sister would uh, take her along to the store uh she liked to she liked to take chewing gum and candy bars and put them in her pockets oh, klepto. <laughs> so my so my sister ended up giving her socks to put on her hands and those were called her shopping socks. <laughs> oh my god. So you, if you have a child that has been naughty and like they like to they like to ha shop, just take them to the store <laughs> like this. They'll be fashionable and warm. And uh, yeah, you just pull on her sock. These are shopping socks. <laughs> awesome. This oh. This is too good for that. This is this is too good a yard for that. But yeah, I'm looking at how to make the this into this. Everybody said uh, try the crazy sock lady pattern of the afterthought heel and everything. And I'm gonna give it a try. I think these might be 64 stitches, and it's a little bit more dense than my regular knitting. So I don't think there's gonna fit me at all. But we're gonna try. We're gonna see what's happened. I put some little uh, tags every 10 just so I know where every 10th is so I'm um, 10th stitch is so we're gonna we're gonna see what happens but I wanted to show it I think that is so fantastic I mean like I could get I could support that a, a sock winder yeah we're just really long sleeves sock sock, <laughs> sock shop ship <laughs> <laughs> let's see what the agenda says here what are you making? What am I making? Yes. All right. So, um, so uh, on the quilt stream, I was working on uh, a, a, a pattern, and it is called the preppy uh, pattern. And basically, it is a pattern by, and I have her name down here. It is pattern by Andy Knowlton Design. And I love it. It's a free quilt pattern. And let me show you what I made. Yay. Um, Aaron, I'm probably going to need a little help. Do you want me to stand? Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so we're calling... This is the wrong way. There we go. So we have... This turned out to be a... 70 by 60 uh, pattern and I absolutely fell in love uh, making this and it is not something that would ordinarily captivate my or I would gravitate to because it's got flowers in it but I was like, you know what? I'm actually feeling it. I don't know what has happened in 2022, but I have gotten into flowers. And it's a little bit more romantic, but you can see like in the pattern, and I'm going to I'm going to say right now when I was uh, showing the pattern on the quilt stream and thank you Tran she says oh that reminds me of the Microsoft uh, logo <laughs> and I could not unsee it um, yeah so this is the pattern is called preppy um, but I for my rendition my, my version I'm, I'm naming it the preppy I'm sorry the Microsoft preppy or the pre preppy Microsoft quilt and I use some this is all Alice in glass fabric and I'm just so in love with it it's um the the sashing is really reading from afar it reads like a solid but it's actually a really fun print and it just I think it just pops and it's a very generous uh, couch quilt and I've already got the binding on it so it's actually in the queue to get long armed and I've got my work cut out over there <laughs> there is there's an actual queue there's an actual queue and I'm just so happy that I made it. 
And what's fun is that this quilt is basically just made of one quilt block uh, repeated, but there's two different color variations. So we've got the Microsoft logo version, and then we also have just the uh, black and white version. So I use the same sashing on both, and then you have the four, um, the four colors. And in the original version of the preppy quilt, she kind of varied throughout the quilt, the, the, the layout of placement of each of those colors. And I was just like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go like, I want everything exactly the same. And I'm really like, this is just something that I can bring out in spring and I love it. And this was the first quilt that we, uh, that we took a picture for Instagram that had, uh, cause my Instagram game sucks. <laughs> Take pictures of your projects and put them on Instagram. Charlie, you're doing an amazing job. Um, but uh, yeah, this was the first quilt picture that we got with the garden feature. <laughs> Oh, one of the garden features, the wind spinners, was in the picture. I got there first. Ordinarily, you know, it was his thing, and I was expecting him to have, like, one of his pictures uh, of, like, a shawl or something. You know, the, Aaron likes to do these artistic... A lot of them never make it to Instagram because I get told no. <laughs> They're weird. <laughs> He's like, no, this is too weird. But, like, but it's fun. like I jumped there first because it was like, oh, wow, look, garden spinner. That'll look pretty. Uh, like fine. you actually go in the garden. Like I actually go in the like garden. He, he like said I he's in the flowers. He's in the fake flowers. He doesn't go outside to see the flowers. <laughs> yeah, so we've got uh, Preppy Microsoft, and it's a free pattern. Show notes below, and it's a great one for beginners. Straight side, uh, straight sewing, and just making sure that you have your quarter inch seam all nice and even, and then making sure that all of your um, all of your uh, joins. What am I? What am I trying to say? All of my points. Points match and they're not lopped off so love it i love it too yeah it's just i love it it's a it's a easy breezy um cover girl. actually it was not a, a quick one to do i would say it would it would be this took me about four solid days five solid days of just like cutting and i actually did use my accu quilt to cut out all of my my pieces um so between cutting and between uh sewing all the blocks and then all the piecing and then the um the border that i did yeah it took me about four or five days but i like i mean like i really like to make sure that everything is matching up and on this pattern like if something is is not lining up like I ripped it out and I did because I wanted it, you know, I wanted it to look like perfect. I did it. <laughs> perfect. Did you see that? Did you see on the cut? Did you see that? Talking about it. <laughs> Everybody's talking about it. <laughs> but yeah, preppy Microsoft, a lot of fun. That's good. What else are you working on? Oh my God, it's me again? Yes, it is. Oh Lord. Because I knew you have more, uh, you, I have, what are you making than I do? I have been making best use of my time. So uh, the next one is actually an AccuQuilt pattern. I love this one. It is called the, um, the Go Wildflower by AccuQuilt. And it's actually made up of the Hattie's Choice. And I'm gonna show you this. So the Hattie's Choice block is without the flying geese up top, so it's just with the diamond and the two um, the two triangles at the top. So that would be your normal Hattie's Choice block, which is this. So you have Hattie's Choice, and then you can use a lot of your strip dies, and then you're going to want to make um, like if you use your mix and match um, cube, and I, I think it's the I use the mix and match eight inch cube uh, for my supplemental pieces, like these small little squares and my flying geese to give me a little bit of sashing and to build up and make this go wildflower. Um, but yeah, it was I absolutely loved it. This is another free pattern, and let me show it to you. So we have 
This one is going to measure uh, 50 by 60. I have not added a border, but I do intend on uh, adding one. And I am so thrilled about how um, this came together. Um, I initially uh, saw the, the inspiration, which is they had it in all black background, and then all of their diamonds they had in one um, a pop of green, and then they did the white um, the white around to make the flower. I was like, you know what? I love I love how the um, the the bold background really makes these flowers stand out. Um, but I bumped it up a notch. It's and gorge. I used um, damask damask fabrics to make up the the diamonds and. Let me show you. Like this is these two were my favorite, um, and that's why I put them in the center. But the green and the pink were my absolute. These are my two favorite colors in this collection, and they just absolutely pop. But if you notice what I did, which was uh, actually another first for me, is I took the fabric, and the only thing I I did that was new was I fussy cut. Um, these f these flowers so that each one of these diamonds has the flower all throughout so it's nice and even but gang this damask uh, quilting cotton is one of my absolute favorite I have been I have been clenching onto this and hoarding this collection for so long and I love that even though I fussy cut I really didn't waste a lot of fabric and it to me it just gives it a little bit more because um, you know how it is sometimes we we just um, we take a print of something and then we just cut into it we don't really we don't really celebrate the pattern itself that's on the fabric and so that was a lot of fun it was the first for me that I was fussy cutting and it is worth the effort even though you're not cutting bunches of fabric at a time you're literally cutting each one and I think there was like 72 of them that I had to cut out it was well worth it to me um, and every time I look at it it's like yeah I know I did that but this damask uh, fabric is so bold and again I don't know what it is I'm I'm really embracing all of these florals and like I love this it's kind of like a, um, an olive color I just think it's so pretty they and are gorgeous th they just radiate um, and I'm, I'm I'm so glad I didn't have to use it all this one's the only one that stands out like I don't know if it should be in the collection but maybe I'm wrong so for that reason I didn't use these two in the quilt just because they were just so different this is the only one if you notice that it actually has a creamy background whereas all the rest of the ones have like there's no cream in it they're, okay. like, they're definitely so like these two these two didn't look like the others and so I didn't use them but I really I'm still glad that I got them I just have to figure the right project for yeah. them but the damask is oh Gorgeous. Gorgeous, and darling. Who, you know, I was trying to think um, when I was writing up the show notes. This is Ink and Arrows, um, Ink and Arrow Fabrics, which I believe may be a subsidiary or they're tied somewhere uh, into quilt um, QT Fabrics. And Lola, I think, is uh, something, lo it's Lola Damask, Damask um, Fabric. Lola Damask Fabric is the line uh, by QT Fabrics. It's no longer in print. This is something I got uh, a couple of years ago, and it's my precious. And what's like, what's lovely is that I know that <clears throat> there are many people that they're really not into the the uh, the rainbow, you know, discovering the rainbow. And this has a lot of color without hitting you over the head and saying, "Ooh, another rainbow quilt." Yeah. Um, I, but I just, I mean, like this one. Whew, now that I've got the, the top finish and I just have to do the border, this is going to be one that I'm definitely going to custom quilt and it just deserves some feathers, which I, That's strug fun. I struggle with. I'm going to admit I struggle with it, but it's going to push me into that, in, into that next player level. Check out my TikTok. <laughs> 
Will you ever take the quilt stream from in front of the sewing machine to the long arm? If I know, uh, if I feel confident in what I have to share, I mean, Tracy and Emma, I would say those two ladies over at the Curly Seams, they definitely, I could put them live in front of a camera, in front of their long arm, and they could definitely uh, share the share the wealth of knowledge. But I'd be like, hey, gang, and everybody, I feel like uh, it would be like going to the DMV for your first driver's license test. And, you know, they're just dinging you for missing the stop sign. You ran a red light and didn't buckle your be seat belt, like all these things that would be wrong. But that's what it's all about. You've got to get through these things to learn. So long answer no, <laughs> not yet, but I do want to. So we'll see what's going on in four years. The long arm stream. That would be fun. <clears throat> the long stream. The long, st long stream. We won't make this a long stream gang. But, that would be a great show. I mean, just imagine. I mean, like this is going to be a quilt that I just, you just, and you're not eating with that on you, are you? <laughs> It's like, do you guys, do you guys uh, who make quilt, your quilters out there, uh, or if somebody's giving you a quilt, I hope that you turn the quilt over if you're going to eat a plate of food uh, while still underneath the quilt. This is coming from the gentleman who was eating, what was it, chicken fingers or something in bed a few months ago? Chicken you, wings. Chicken wings. I walked into the bedroom and I was like, what are you doing? Have you become this person? I was, I was on my side. And Seamus was right next to him, just lounging. I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> I was eating chicken wings in bed and I was watching Netflix. <laughs> I was like, well, when did we become these people? Listen, when he was he when he was on um, COVID watch and for ten days, I mean, there was a nest around him. I couldn't do anything else. There was a nest, and I had to ask him, could you please lay in the center of the bed <laughs> to try to even out the mattress? And I did lay in the center of the bed to try to even up, but yeah, there I I nested pretty hardcore. Seamus didn't even come in to see me when I had it. Like he's. Nope. Nope. Mm, meow out. Nope. I know. It was whatever. All right. Aaron. Yes. What are you me. making? Oh, so glad you asked. Um, I am still making, and I'll tell you a little bit why I put it in timeout, but I'm back to it, gang. This is the Jinzan cardigan. Uh, it was, where am I? Yeah, here we go. Jinzan cardigan. Wait, a cardigan? What? Yes. For me? Incorrect. That is not the right answer. Jim Zan Cardigan, it's from Moon and Turtle, uh, released by Pom Pom Knitting. I showed you, I think, the book last time. Um, I think I was just starting the sleeves when we chatted last time. I started this around Thanksgiving, and then I'll tell you why I put it in a timeout. Um, this is going to be awesome once I find the front. Is this in a chip basket? This is in a chip pony basket for his <laughs> pony friends. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> working on it, yes. So I have the sleeves all finished and this is an oversized cardigan so it's meant to be oversized and pretty baller. Um, and then I am working on the collar band right now. So here's the issue that I had because I wasn't thinking straight probably about a couple months ago. Um, one of the bind offs they had for the sleeves was kind of like a Kitchener stitch to do that and also around on the collar band. And for some reason that day I was thinking, well, if I Kitchener, it's going to be it's going to close the sleeve and I can't, that was disgusting, I can't put my hand through the sleeve. For some reason, my mind just wasn't clicking that day. So I'm talking to Carrie at the Creative Obsession and she's like, try a tubular bind off. So I did a tubular bind off on here, which I've never done before, but I love the way it kind of folds over and just kind of runs together. So, which meant I had to do a tubular bind off on here. I do understand now that the Kitchener stitch, if I would have done it correctly, would not have closed this. Again, it was one of those things. So I think in all, in all fairness, would you say that you have worked longer on the this and this than the whole sweater? Yes, I can say that because uh, when I was doing the bind off on the band, the collar band, so you do, because uh, I did two, three different colors, I'll get to that in a second, three different colors, I'm doing the bind off here because it's three different colors, then I'm going to pick up and bind off 
on in the, right here as well. Does that make sense? So I did this because it's three different colors. Then I'm going to do this and this. Uh, let me see if I have a correct name for it. the front band. Okay, so yeah, I'm doing the left front band, then I'm doing the right front band, and I just got doing the neck band. Um, when I was doing the bind off, for some reason I got jacked up here, and it was. I don't know how to explain this. So when I'm doing the bind off, it's supposed to be kind of folded like this and look pretty. You can't see this. But then somehow I got mixed up so it was just like creating like a tube that was right here and it just didn't look right. So I put it in timeout. When I put it in timeout that's when I actually started working on this shawl. So I ripped it all back and then I started again and it just didn't look pretty. So if you notice, let me see if I can do this. I started here and the edge looks pretty good. Then there's a few points that the edge just kind of looks gross and ratchet, which I finally got over after ripping it back so many times and doing it again. It eventually ended up looking good. When I tried it on because of the dark purple, you can't see it. I'm trying to think if it's gonna bother me or not. I really don't think so because where it is gross lays behind my neck and who's gonna be like whispering sweet nothings behind my ear and neck all the time to actually look at that. No one. What changed that, that might have caused that? I don't know. That's the problem. Like I could, well at first I thought maybe I did the wrong thing. Like when it's supposed to be, it's like a, a knit off, excuse me, knit off then kind of a pearl, almost like a Kitchener. And then you do some stuff on the back it's a very unique tubular bind off. It's different. And I think maybe I, let's just say I probably purled off when I should have knit off in some sections. And then when I ripped back, I did it correctly. But then I think I've ripped back so many times that the yarn's just starting to get a little bit old and kind of, yeah, if that makes sense. But it's looking better. But one thing I did do is this middle co color right here, which I was pretty proud of. I was like, I have nothing and I don't want to buy any more yarn. Went into my stash. This uh, aqua color is a, this is all So you ran out, of, <clears throat> ran out of what you needed? Well, I never had it because I didn't think I was going to do this band, this three color band. Um, it's worsted weight Malabrigo Rios yarn in like a uh, aqua color. And then I held it together with a fingering weight of serial knitters Uwak it was a one of a kind and it created this really cool color if you can see it there's you probably can't see it on here there's little splashes of like yellow and uh, really bright green so I love the way it looks with the purple it's pretty baller so basically that's why I put it in timeout because I got tired of ripping it back then bringing it back this is my fault not the patterns I should have just done the actual kind of two needle Kitchener bind off and it would have been much better which I'm Debating if once I pick up the rest of it, if I'm gonna do the bind off, I should probably do the tubular bind off like I already started, because I don't know how much different it's gonna look. I mean, I can make a swatch and see how much different, because it's it's a lot of like doing this instead of two needles and kind of, but still you get to pull the string thread yarn through. I am just not good with words it today. It sounds like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. This bind off is a lot of work, but yeah. This is all hence, done. Hence the, the fact and restating that all of this is taking longer than the, the sweater body. <laughs> exactly. The bind the off is taking a lot longer and it's going to be super warm. This is all made out of, this is City Tweed Aaron Weight from Knit Picks. And this color it's is, very collegiate. is brocade. And the gray color, the creamish color, I don't have with me right now. Let me see. Is there anything in here? Oh, it is um, Snowshoe. So Snowshoe and brocade held together make this. And eventually it's going to be awesome once I finish this and it is pretty oversized this is extremely soft hopefully in a few more months it's going to be even more oversized but uh yeah I'm curious to know how this blocks out it's because I mean oh and I even did the color band right here as well right on the sleeves so look at me all threading out and stuff like that Love it. Like I said, my storytelling's terrible. That's one of the reasons I took the class, because uh, I need to be better at explaining things. But I think everybody got it. Everybody gets it, right? Everybody speaks Aaron. 
I think. Everybody speaks Aaron, right? Some days. See, this is already warm and hot, so we gotta take it is off. Is it really? Yeah. You should try it on you, because it's probably really oversized. But, yeah. I should try it on? I should, do you want to try it on? <laughs> I love it. It's very, so far, I it's love very it. purple. Yeah, well, I wanted to go outside of my normal color scheme of blue or gray, so that's why I did it. I can't find the arm. There it is. You kind of look hot in it from the side. It's, no. Too oversized? It, it, yeah. <laughs> So was that the monster mash? You look like a little like mummy-ish with these things hanging off. Yeah, and I don't know about this feature. The, well, that yeah, that, that eventually will come off. But yeah. This is where they go. They're usually in the couch. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, I am excited to finish it. I'm almost at the finish line. So hopefully it won't be too much longer. And uh, of course, right in time for spring. It's heavy. A huge Aaron Waite cardigan. It's heavy. It is heavy. Uh, chip. Uh, so that was what? The, the, the cloth cardi? What are you making? The cloth cardi? No, that is not. This is the Jinzan cardigan. The Jinzan yes. cardigan from Moon and Turtle. Yes, correct. <laughs> correct. Love it. Wait, what are these for? Why are they out? Oh, Lord. <laughs> We're okay. <laughs> I was I, like, wait, was this in something? They were on your side of the okay, table. We're so fine. We're good. It's on you. Continue. Okay, so what am I making? Um, all right, so next we have got another, yet another quilt, um, quilt top that has been completed. And I'm telling you, this was one that I was scrolling through and I was like, okay, what can I possibly do that is making a big statement and pretty low a pretty low effort that would be kind of like potato chip sewing if there is such a thing and I found um, inspiration on Instagram um, and actually I was thinking about um, I was thinking about 70s uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s Versace, just as my like starting point, and I came across the Hound's Tooth, and I didn't go in any weird way. I just wanted to do a um, a black and white quilt. I have never done a black and white quilt in my life, and I was like, okay, I think it's time. <laughs> It's, it is time. It's time. So this one is 55 by 60. There is no border, but there will be one. And gang, I am <sighs> so in love with this. Yes. Um, and it's crazy because this one is a strip piecing quilt and it's not, um, it's, it, 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 once you know the trick, which check out the quilt stream, because once you know the trick, it is so doable. And the funniest thing that, I, it was kind of a le learning lesson, like, I do quilts because I like them. I mean, obviously that we would have to love them, um, but it was how many people actually gravitated to the picture of this on um, my design wall green screen. People, like I got the most likes that I have ever gotten on this um, on this quilt. And it's, it's shocking because people really are really into these great graphic quilts that are more modern. And what's funny is that this is literally, literally, you could get a stack of five inch um, layer cake. Uh, so five inch, you need 42, I think of those, and 42 of the black. And then it's strip piecing. So I took one, two, three, four pieces, did strips, uh, and I made a tube. And then it's just your cutting and your, I mean, like this goes together. It's a fun, fun make. And it's one, it's, it's funny when you're, when you're working on it and you've got things laid out, you really can't see, you actually have to stand back and like is this working is this right and then your eyes start going cross because you're like did I you know did I make the orientation right but it is so much fun and I was like this is the safe journey this is just in black and white 
I would love to make another one of these, but if you guys remember uh, Mondo from Project Runway, he could take houndstooth like this and then mix it with plaid or polka dots and you would think, not in your life. Yeah. And he would make you like, oh my God, where do I buy that? So I want to do kind of like a houndstooth um, uh, Mondo version. And this one is, in the meantime, this one's going to get a white border and then I'm going to do a very, very, very shocking green, like my green screen bore, um, binding. Um, and actually it was Angel who said well, you, I could do a flange, which a flange um, border or binding, it has um, actually two, it looks like this. So there's your outer and your inner, and it's like there's this little piece of uh, flange that goes on just on the inside of the of the binding, and it just gives it another um, touch. And that, you, it's not usually uh, quilted down, and I don't know if I'm gonna uh, if I'm gonna do that, but definitely it's gonna get. I was thinking about doing along the top and the side of one top and side, doing black and then doing white on the other. So that would be my um, my border, and then do that shocking green binding on the entire thing. And I would be so happy about this. Um, this one, believe it or not, I've already figured out my quilting on this one. This, like, usually I, I, I come up short and I'm like, I have no idea what I'm gonna quilt or how I'm gonna quilt this. And, you know, it's just like, boy, figuring out the design is tough enough, but then now I have to come up with uh, a way that this is gonna be quilted. This one was easy. I'm going to, I'm gonna take um, diagonal, I'm just gonna do the diagonals. And, but I'm also going to do horizontal and vertical. Um, and I think, just think I'm only going to do the verticals um, along, along with the pattern. I wouldn't obviously go against the, the grain, yeah. but I would definitely do and appreciate those verticals. I am so, so happy I made this. One, I see little like Space Invader characters in them. I know that doesn't matter to you. Two, is there a proper direction this should go? Because everything's like, is this upside down or is it right side up? Because uh, <clears throat> it changes a little bit when you, like, uh, is this the main way that's supposed to be? This is the way I see it. Okay. I don't know if that is proper. And what I did learn is that um, houndstooth is... And I wish I, I, I actually wish I, I went down this rabbit hole. I understand that there are more than one version of a houndstooth pattern, and this just happens to be one of them. Um, it's very recognizable. When people think of houndstooth, houndstooth, this is more in line with what they're thinking of. But um, these reappear, uh, repeating geometric patterns are just more than what you see here. So, yeah, strip piecing was so much fun loved this and I think it's gonna be great again once it's finished. you know like who wouldn't who wouldn't love this brendan brendan was like that is the favorite my most favorite thing that you have ever made chip and i'm like it is <laughs> because it was like one of the one of the um the easiest i mean like the only thing i really had to take care of um while i was doing it was just making sure that all my points and i wasn't lopping stuff off uh but i just it just like it's beautiful question is it good <laughs> You with the big beard. <laughs> Are you going to do a white back, uh, backing on this? Because I feel like if you do a darker color, then you'll be able to see the darker color through the white. Well, there's going to be batting in between. Okay. So that should alleviate some of that. Um, I don't really feel like the, the uh, a dark background would pop through that miserably. But it was just a question. Yeah. That's so, why I raised my hand. Yeah, yeah. So... Even still, like you, you, by the time you have binding, this is actually against black right now. You don't see it. Okay. So by the time there's batting, you won't. Curiosity. Yeah, but oh, uh, I, I mean, like this is one that you you're like, hmm, I'm feeling lux today. I'm feeling, you know, like I. This is the I feel like one that you bring out when company comes over. <laughs> Look what I got. Company's coming, bring it out. Or I could turn it into a dress. 
<laughs> do what you gotta do. <laughs> I can turn it into a moo moo. Wow, that's awesome. All right, so that's the hound's tooth. I don't have a um, uh, a pattern I really went by, but I did do in my show notes on that episode when I showed the kind of the magic and the tr the trick. And actually, you know what? That was one. Talk about anything can happen when you're going live. That was an episode that one of my settings kept going mute for like two minutes. But tune in. The information's still there. It does get better. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the one thing I've learned. Like you, I can, you have to roll with the punches, and it actually it makes you, um, I think, a better presenter. And like that is kind of important. Like things are gonna go wrong, like on Zoom or if you're you're hosting a meeting, and of course, you know, oh, I can't get logged in or, you know. Sorry about it. You're, you're stomping out <laughs> fires and I'm just, there's some people that have gone live 365 days. There was one gentleman and he was like, what he learned out of that 365 was amazing. Am I going to do that? Nope. No, that's too much. Um, but even what I like where I started and versus how I feel now, I mean like the worst part's usually the, 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 the first minute and then after that, you're like, okay, let's do this. But Hound's Tooth, and which way do we want to go? We can go that way. Ta da! It's a bit toothy. It's toothy. So that's what I made. Aaron. Yeah. What are you making? So I have one more. This is living in my Scrappy Angel Aaron bag. I have a bag named after me, the style. Uh, she has had a, a launch, what? shop update last week and this bag had foxes on it it sold out gorgeous immediately people are like i want that foxy bag <laughs> i like that so yeah <laughs> scrappy angel um sent us this bag a while ago i love it it's uh it's a, do you consider this a box bottom yes no yes then a wire top Okay. Okay. It has a wire top around it. Um, I recognize this. This is Tula Pink, correct? Yes. Okay. Tula Pink. Fantastic bag. Inside she, and out. Inside. Yeah. Tula Pink inside and out. So uh, she does have a code for us. Uh, ScrappyAngel.com. She has just updated her, her shop. You are going to get 10% uh, off if you go to use HustleFan10. I check out, you can get it, and the link is below. She does so many different kinds of bags. Yeah, and what, I, what I love about Angel is that she does not use, um, she doesn't use garbage fabric. She is using high end, like she uses good fabric, and I appreciate that. Like the hardware that she uses is, uh, is really nice. She gives a little embellishment. This one happens to have a little angel on it. Um, I think all of them have angels. Like every bag I've seen, I think has a, a, has a little angel on it as a zipper pull, and it's gorgeous. You probably can't see that, but yeah. So yeah, check out the Scrappy Angel because we love her. And our last bingo, she donated like four different things. That was obviously New Year's Eve bingo. It's been a while, but yeah, she donated like four different things to bingo. Anyway, <laughs> what's living inside? What's it? living inside is another cardigan that I started. Will you say this person's name because I know I will just ruin it? Jean Pierre, uh, Jean Philippe Cliche. That's what I thought it was, but I didn't want to ruin it. When you have a name like Aaron Brown, that's the only name you really know. Okay, so this is a cardigan, a cardigan, the KLF Cardi. Like KLF. Uh huh. K L A K L A F K L A F. That was just K L A F. <laughs> yeah, there was no A in that one. But yeah, it's uh, it's so cool looking, and I had to do it. Let me see if I can get a picture. Let me switch this over. Yeah, so it's like three different colors. There we go, almost. Um, this is kind of like the boyfriend sweater on the boyfriend. 
<laughs> exactly. So this cardigan is kind of a, there's a lot of pearl twos, knit twos, and I am at the very top. I'm probably about here. I'm getting ready to bind off for the sleeves or put the sleeves on scrap yarn. That way I can keep on going. Um, there were a few questions I had once I got started on this cardigan. I was talking to our friend Seth because he said he was testing in it, but he never finished it. But he gave me a few tips. And I think uh, Brian, I reached out because he was knitting it as well, but he put it down as well. And I was asking them some questions about, I wasn't sure about some counts because it didn't go into great detail of like Pearl 2, Knit 2, this many times and stuff. So you kind of have to keep track as you go to when you're going to add a new row when the sleeves start to kind of separate here. Because if you notice, the sleeves are all done in, I don't know if everybody would see this, in stock in that stitch. So it's going around this way so here's a sleeve and stock in that and the rest of it's knit to pearl too but as it's growing you kind of have to keep track of like is this one going to be in a pearl then once i come back it's eventually going to be two pearls that way it kind of splits off and goes into either directions some of it wasn't making 100 sense to me a lot of you guys are really good pattern readers so it's probably not the pattern so i just reached out to him personally and said hey a couple questions he got back to me right away and it totally resolved the issue so he did yeah. So it was very nice of him to uh, wow. give me some feedback. He's like, oh, yeah, that's, I asked the question. He goes, yeah, that's totally what it means. I was Can like, you imagine okay. If Chrysler did that, hey, Mr. Chrysler, I have an issue on my car. <laughs> Who drives a Chrysler? <laughs> no, that would be actually very nice. But yeah, I'm super excited. Again, it's in three different colors. Um, it's supposed to be made with, I think it's three to five inches of positive ease. I am making the size four, which I'm one wondering if right now I did a, I, I did a swatch gang I did a swatch and I washed it because I'm using super wash and it did grow a little bit so I think I'm gonna do the right size for me um, going back to what I said earlier I'm not trying I'm not gonna order any more yarn I had a bunch of nitpicks in my cart for ordering this I was like no go into your stash so I did and I had old down the street Pacific Fabrics closed probably, what, four years ago now? I don't even remember. And everything was like, let's say, 70% off. So I picked up a bunch of Cascade 220 Superwash. Um, and I had just like five skeins of this, four skeins of this. And I was like, well, eventually, what am I going to do? Saw this pattern, and that's why I did it. So baby blue is going to be at the top. And then eventually, at the very bottom, it's going to have this. I don't know if this contrast is going to be really good or not but we're gonna have this like purplish and then brown on one side we went back and forth chip and i both went back and forth like should the top be brown or should the bottom be brown and we finally picked baby blue because of my eyes of course <laughs> baby blue gets well, these well, eyes and when i have a tan oh forget about it just kidding but yeah that's what i'm doing and since it's super wash it's gonna grow when i did the swatch it grew like an extra inch so if I'm worried about the fit, we'll super wash it, kind of get it wet, block it out, and it's going to be good. Because right now it's all kind of bunched together. But once I get it going and block it, it's going to come out and look amazing. But yeah, this is my first time doing one of his patterns. Oh, and so she's got pockets in here. She does have pockets in here. So I'm excited to see it finished. And yeah, I'm just working on it. It is made. I'm doing my chow goo uh, needles, which are my favorite needles ever. And what is this on? Sometimes you can't read these. I am working on five millimeter needles, which is a US eight. US eight. So yeah, it calls for DK weight. I got gauge with my super watch, which is worsted. I wasn't very concerned about it because DK and worsted are so similar uh, to me that I've noticed. So yeah, I'm excited to do it. So I got two cardigans I am working on currently and uh, I love cardigans. I'm going to carry the Creative Obsession Carries house here in a few weeks to dye some yarn because I think we're going to Rhinebeck. We have a place booked. We don't have the flight yet, but we might see some of you at Rhinebeck. So we're going to dye some yarn for a Rhinebeck sweater that I'm going to make. But then like, should I just make a cardigan? Because some years it's freezing. Some years it sounds like it's hot like the last year. They said it's like 70 some degrees. And when you have a cardigan, it's more easy to take on and off than take a whole jumper off. 
So I'm trying to decide if I want to make a cardigan or have a Rhinebeck sweater. Shouldn't I have one if I too am leaving the house? <laughs> Can't you just sew a Rhinebeck jacket? Actually, or I'm thinking about making myself a quilted jacket and then I'll have one of those flags in the air that people can just like the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Crossing so our, guard so our group. But yeah, I'm group. there. I'm gonna be there to support. So you know, I'm gonna have if I don't get a sweater, I'm gonna have to make something from my own self. Woohoo! But yeah, so far we have the house book. We just need to get it going with everything else. But yeah, I'm excited to. Uh, so the cloth cardi. By L A F cardi by, by Jean Philippe Cliche. Correct. Was this a free pattern? No, it was not. I want to say, I think he's in Canada. I think it was like eight or ten dollars, in between eight and ten dollars. And was that the model or is that him? This is him. Oh, yes. that's him. Yes. Well, let's say hi. hi. Yes. Here that, we go. Yep, that's him. There he is. And there's not too many out there so far. And I'm like, why? Because it, it's awesome. And Seth and Brian, you really need to finish yours. That way we can be a uh, cardigan Twins. buddies. Twins. Well, threes. Oh, threes. Twins. Threes. Musketeers. Yes. Oh, you know what? I forgot to show real quick. Do you mind if I Absolutely. back it up a little bit? Uh, Scrappy Angel sent this to us. She said, I can either keep it or give it away at a bingo. Look how cute this is. A project Look bag? Look at this owl bag, she said. I forgot to show it when I was showing the other bag. Actually, this one is this. super soft. Super soft. It's smaller than the Aaron bag. But yeah, it's it still has the oh, wire on top. Oh, it still has the wire, wire frame. Wire on top. Box bottom. Great uh, sock. Just Pocket. throw your socks in there. All that stuff. And who doesn't love owls? Come on, if you, if you, and foxes. Foxes might be in stock again, maybe in May, I think she said. So. She's gonna have another shop update in May. Um, There's still some stuff in there, so go check her out anyways, so. Yeah. Love it, so. I don't know what to do with it, because it's cute, especially love the grumpy red one. His eyes are like, closed. I love grumpy things. This little guy. Look at this little guy. All right, uh, Aaron. <laughs> yes. Let's uh, let, let's change gears if we can. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Is there a surprise coming? No. Oh. Yeah, I'm ready. You had to have it. Oh yeah, I had a few had to what did, have it. What did you buy? What did you had to have? Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's start with this. And I just told you a little bit ago I wasn't buying yarn, but I did get a couple things because. Uh, it was all pretty much free to me because of gift cards and winning some stuff. A few months ago, we have a place in Redmond, Washington called Motley Zoo. Clever name, huh? So it's for where you uh, animals are go to be fostered. Uh, there's no animals there, but they find foster families for animals. And so it's just a hip place. It has all different kinds of rock and roll vibes and stuff. I got the shirt. I have to show you. Like, you have to check out Motley Zoo. Where were you? Mer merch. It was called Motley Zoo. I mean, look at this. It is called Kitty Stardust, and it's like a David Bowie kitty cat. And they have a dog one. They have all kinds of merch that is rock and roll. Wait and a minute, fun. wait a minute. This, you won something, right? Well, yeah, I'm you not had... there yet. Motley Zoo Animal Rescue. I love this. That's really cute. I know. It's totally cute. And why... The reason I went there is because Serial Knitters was doing a pop-up shop. Obviously, Motley Zoo wants to do some fundraisers. So Serial Knitters did a pop-up there and two other yarn dyers did a pop-up there. So, and some of the proceeds, if you bought yarn, would go to, um, would go to Motley Zoo, which is a, a great idea. So my friend Denise went, hi Denise, uh, I met her there and we're just like, do we really need more yarn? Yes or no? Add to cart. We didn't, so we just looked around, but there was a raffle and it was a few days after Betty White died. So we said, well, we have to donate to this because Betty White just died and what would Betty White do? She would donate. So we didn't buy the yarn, we did the raffle, which I think all the proceeds went to. Well, anyways, I won one of the raffles. So I donated, I don't want to tell you how much I donated. It was good. Um, <laughs> but then I won a $50 gift card to Acorn Street, which is in Seattle, which is great. So not only did I donate, I got money back because I got a gift card. So then I drove over to Acorn Street a week later 
So you're going to give whatever's in this bag to other people because is, you're going to pass it forward? That is incorrect. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. I did pass it forward because I did make a hatch hat for my coworker Vince, who was my backup when I had COVID because I felt bad. So I did get some, I did get some Arbor Brooklyn Tweed yarn. I made a hatch hat and gave it to Vince, which he totally loves. And then while I was, I was there for the gift certificate, I uh, bought some Brooklyn Tweed yarn. I got the shelter color because at the one point I it was really calling me. And I was like, yes, I need this in my life. That is beautiful. And look how gorgeous that is. I like that it's a, br it's a, it's a, a, uh, a brighter gray? Yes, it is a brighter gay, but there's some blues in there. A brighter gay? A brighter, it's a brighter gay gray. <laughs> Slow down. Yeah, exactly. Did I say gay again? You said br a brighter gay. I thought you said that just because. No! Oh, God. <laughs> Well, that's what I am, and it's always on my mind. A brighter so, gay. The colorway is saddle, and it is also gorgeous. It's kind of like a, what do you say, a brown orange Gang, or something? this one is called Faded Quilt. Is it really? It is called Faded Quilt, and this one is saddle. Oh, that's why I got it. Look at that. It's like our worlds converged. <sighs> Mine's blown everywhere. But if you bought the ranch yarn, you got a free pattern, which is this uh, Brooklyn Tweed pattern. Is it Hansmere? Hansmeyer hat? Is it an H or a B? I would say the, the Hansmere. 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 That's why I like H A N S M I R E. Is that Hansmere? Probably. But yeah, it came with a free pattern. So you can't see it right there. Well, take it out of the sleeve. Yeah, true. I don't know. He is so particular about all of his, his, his patterns that they immediately go into sleeves. Yeah, so there's the hat right there, which you can make three different sizes. And I'm going to use this, uh, this yarn to try it out. I don't have much sport weight at all. I think, I'm assuming most people's stashes have the least amount of sport weight. I could be incorrect about that, but that's what I'm doing. So yeah, I got those. Then, wait, wait, what? Mm. <laughs> then, so my mother and father got me a gift certificate for cereal knitters for Christmas, and I was kind of cruising through the site. I saw these, don't freak out, sock, the sock pattern on Sock Shock. Sock Shock, <laughs> hashtag, yes. Hashtag. Again, it's by John Philip Cliche. <laughs> Jean Philippe Cliche, the same person who did this cardigan, has these vice versa socks. I was going to show them, then you grabbed it away. I was just making sure that the <laughs> pattern wasn't showing. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the tools you need. These are uh, vice versa socks. Let me see if I can kind of find a better picture of it. But they look pretty cool. Oh come on, you can do it. Yeah. So I was like, these look interesting. And this is holding two fingering together to kind of get a DK weight. So when I was looking through the Serial Knitter site, because I had my gift card, I saw this color, which is Dusty Plum. I was like, oh my gosh, are you, are you kidding me with this color? Actually, that looks like the Pantone 2022 color <clears throat> of the year. 2022, really? I thought it was a, oh no, you're right. And then I took it with sand, which sand I've used before, and I thought that they would look good Ooh, that's together. Really, they have such a beautiful sheen on them. Together to make these socks. Now, that's one pair of socks. That's Well, I might be able to get two out of it. It depends what size. No, I'm saying, but that's yes. exciting. Then, uh, since I had the gift card for a certain amount, I had to get two more skeins, and these were both, I think, UX. Now, this one's Quack which is almost like sand, but it has little color oh, pops in there. I love it. And then this one was... Wait, this, this one has this some teals in it, and it's got some... <clears throat> some uh, Browns and burnt oranges. amber and oranges. Then there was a uh, one-of-a-kind glowing coal, which was also gorgeous. Look, it has some purples, some kind of reddish highlights and I'm stuff. Seeing, I love the purple jewel tones. So I ordered this, and I was just going to make socks with this. Then Deb threw this one in with a note saying, hey, I don't know what you're making, but she thinks that this Cade's Cove 
would go <gasps> with everything that I use. Oh, I love the greens in there that I know, adds it to it. But wait until I put them all together, especially like these. So if I put all these together like that, and even add one of these, I mean, that can be a Shaw now. That, that is color palette. No socks. Or this one. No socks. So yeah, I'm like, what do I do here? Because they're all so gorgeous together that I'm like, wait a minute. Especially if like you drop that one and just have this. Gang, I, mean, I love, I'm mean, like cereal knitters. I love cereal knitters. Everybody knows I love cereal knitters. I talk about cereal knitters all the time. So she, She's one of our oldies, but goodies that like, hey, she held him by the hand and said, come sit here. Come sit, come sit here. Let's talk. And like, actually, I think she was like an amazing, amazing store owner who helped break the ice on you. Like you're- Oh, totally. Like she said, no, no, we're not, we're gonna defrost you. We're gonna dethaw you and you're, you're coming with me. And she just embraced you and I, she's, I love Deb. So we go go uh, underground now. Yeah, yeah. Dye House uh, Yarns by Serial Knitters Underground. So SerialKnitters.com and uh, check out a lot of her yarn. She sells other yarn like Malabrigo and stuff as well on the site. But check out the Dye House by Serial Knitters stuff. She has lace, fingering, DK, worsted. Well, you know what? So vice versa socks, I don't think they should go anywhere. I think they should still be in your wish list queue, but... Yeah, they, that color combo that you got, and your, I mean, like, again, those are those those should not be hidden under pants and inside shoes. These should, these colors should be around your neck and like, oh my, it's really really pretty. Yeah, these definitely need to be something because they are gorge, darling. <laughs> George, gorge. Where did you just go? Who did you just become? <laughs> Got Mick, I think. I like, think you did. Gorge, yeah. Um, do you have anything fun? I have been so good um, not adding to cart, but. Oh, there's a but. But. It's a big but. Um, our friend Angel, the Scrappy Angel, she, I don't know, is this her episode? Because she's all over the place today. Um, yeah, she was showing some bags at our, we get like a sneak peek into what's in her shop. Um, you can go online or you can jo join in on the Zoom, the, the quilter Zoom along uh, every other week. But she's like, she's like dialing in on Zoom from her shop and she runs the shop out of her house. And man, she has just added all kinds of fabrics, um, blenders and solids and... She made, she makes project bags that I, I even was like, what is that? She showed me this bag that she made and I, well, I call it a bag because it was, was like, like, was that you holding the bag with yes, your arm? Yes, because it was this beautiful, um, this beautiful bag that she made and I call it her bougie bag. And it took me back to the uh, late nineties, early, uh, yeah, late nineties when, do any of you remember Outback Red? Nobody I have spoken to. It was a brand uh, of, of, you know, like if you were a preppy girl and you were like with the in click, um, she, Outback, Outback Red was one of those brands. And this bag that she made just like, catap like time traveled me back to um, the 90s. And it was just so preppy, this bag. But, this is a bag I said, uh, Angel, I need to have one of these. I will leave the house. I will go to the store and I will carry this bag because I will be bougie and holding my Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But I was just like, I fell in absolute love. And she goes, you know, I sell the fabric, Chip. And so I was like, okay, you and me are gonna have a date. So totally, totally, totally not in my, uh, in my repertoire of, of fabrics, but I went there. Now, this whole episode, I've been talking about uh, florals. This one is, <coughs> excuse me, is amazing. So we're gonna start out with the peach. This is what she had in her bougie bag, which the hardware, the embellishments that she did on her bag, 
And I love, this was designed for me, Aaron. It was designed for me, hustlers. <laughs> Because it's the the fabric line is homebody. Oh God! <laughs> the fabric line is called homebody, and it's just got this beautiful soft peach background, and it's got these pops of red that I am just like over the moon. Carrie saw the the navy, and that's what she was like grabbing. To. Like this is just so so pretty that I was just like, I I mean, like I had to add to cart. I didn't ask permission. Not that I ever do. So I got, um, so I, I, I paired up and we were having a lot of fun. I got a personal shopper. We did a little one-on-one -on -one Zoom call and she was walking me through the, her store and we got some peach and we've got, I love, this is a, it's a very soft uh, 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 white, and it's not like a snow white, it's, it's, it's just, I don't, I, uh, and it's not like an egg white. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but it's got these, these small, these very small little, Almost boomerangs? But Almost like boomerangs. little checks or boomerangs or something, but it's just very, very small, which is nice because this is more of a blender that will read as a solid, but it's just got that little bit of extra on it. And then we've got blenders. We've got a peach. And it's not all exact. Like you can see that these are both in the, uh, the peach and pink family. But, I mean, like this is so, so, so pretty to me. And the only thing that I need to add, and we agreed, was that I wanna find another blue uh, that as a solid to really tell this story. And I'm actually thinking, um, a, little, uh, a little hint is that um, Charlotte over at Welcome to Charlotte's podcast, she has been, so hard at work working on a quilt pattern that she wants to release to the world um, in her store. And I'm like, please, please, please pick me, pick me. I want to be one of the testers. And I think this actually might be the fabric because not only um, is Charlotte style romantic, but I, I was teaser. I'm like, Charlotte, you bougie girl. <laughs> Her stuff looks expensive. Her stuff, her her stuff always looks, her makes always look expensive. She has such good taste. And so I was like, I think this is gorgeous. And as a surprise, this is going to be uh, the binding. I just, I love what the story is telling. It is not in my wheelhouse. Uh, it's not my usual gig or repertoire but I just think it's romantic and it still has some of the heaviness uh, that's a little bit masculine that I just think it's just, I'm so, so excited about it. It's awesome, I love it. And it looks expensive. It looks, it really does look expensive. It may not be your thing, but you know, I'm gonna see how I can roll with it. So I've got, you know, I've already, <clears throat> I've already shown it to Charlotte, and I think I've got her blessing. <laughs> she, she's like, yes, it, it looks good. But definitely check out um, uh, scrappyangel.com. Get your 10% off. Hustle Fan 10. And I'm not sure how good, how long that code is good for. So add to cart. Yeah. Add to cart. And then if you don't see something there, um, just reach out to her and she'll tell you what she does have. She's very, very responsive. She's just a nice lady. She's a nice person. Even though she comes up with some little bougie stuff. <laughs> she, was, she sent along another gift. What? So this is, it was funny. I was talking um, on the quilt stream. I was talking about, I am not somebody who ever buys layer cakes. And she's like, you're gonna try this. And so she sent me, a, this one is from um, Art Gallery Fabrics, which is also what the Homebody collection, I think, Homebody, I mean like, it was made for me. But this is also Art Gallery Fabrics and it's a layer cake. And it's it's really, like I, I told her, I, 
Angel, I would have never ever just been in a store and bought this. And I am so appreciative because it's kind of like when you're looking for uh, looking for a quilt pattern and it's like, oh, just get a 10 inch layer cake. And I'm like, yeah, I don't have that. <laughs> and I usually will skip it, but like I can focus on layer cake um, patterns and just see what I could do with, with, with something like just like this instead of, you know, you know me, I buy yardage and with no plan of attack, but this is, hey, this is what you're gonna work with and make a quilt out of it. And it's got some florals in it, it's got some solids. It's really a pretty collection. I'm in, here, I'm here for it. It's got the florals. It's pretty. I'm here for it. Do not steal, don't steal like an artist other people's catchphrases. Well, you know, in a fortnight. <laughs> Don't steal other people's cat dress. <laughs> um, I'm here to stimulate. <laughs> what else? What does Stuart say? Over at the wool patch. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what he says. What's his catchphrase? Does he have wool? Stuart, what's your catchphrase? So yeah, so Angel, thank you very, very much for the gift. And she's like, you can either uh, uh, hang on to it or give it as a bingo gift. I never keep anything for myself. I'm keeping this. Just oh, that's nice. Because I, uh, Angel was good enough to push me into a direction and I want to take the challenge on. Woohoo! And I like the fabric. I love the fabric. So that's all my had to have it. That's all my had to have it as well. Mr. Bananas. This Bananas. Okay, sorry. Anything I got a, a, else? Angel, Angel, she put so much, every, every bag, every piece of fabric had some plastic on it. I mean, like she took such good care, like to make sure that my fabric was gonna arrive. We definitely will reuse um, those. Yeah. Do your grandmother or your mom ever rinse them in the under the faucet and then put them in the the draining board to dry and then put spaghetti in it next week and noodles and like who wants to take a bag of spaghetti somewhere <laughs> but whatever times were different then <laughs> who packed your lunch man your mom as long as you got the moths you're fine though all right, so that is all of my had to have it's, but you know, um, did you have anything else? I don't have anything else. All right, gang, we have, you know us, we love our, we love you guys, and it's all about the community, and it is 2022 by my watch, and we have not had a bingo yet. Bingo. So gang, April is happening. It's right around the corner. I'm writing it down because it's not a surprise that we're having in April, but in case you throw out a date, I'll be like, mm-hmm. It's, it's in the show notes. Oh, well, you have two dates there. We have two dates um, that we've set. We have to settle on one of the two dates, mm -hmm. but just know that bingo is coming. It's gonna be either on April 23rd or 30th, and we're probably gonna have two sessions because we, we're, we're here to fill up the seats and because we've had some generous bingo donations that we'd love to give you a little sneak peek. Just a little sneak peek, uh, our friend Charlie, an amazing person sent us over a bunch of bags that he made. So I want to show you a few things that Charlie has sent over that he has made. Like, look at this thing. Look at this bag. Charlie, your work is so impeccable. And he it's just made... Netting. He, I think, has an, um, a finished object room devoted to all of his finished makes because he has so many project bags. He loves to like assembly line create and dude, he sent us a ton of bags. I mean, the zipper is even rainbow in here. It's packed, it's gorgeous. You can put all kinds of things in there. Then there's like a little bag that has a, a monkey on it. I mean, which is this, this is tulip pink. This is cork. So cork the, on the side. Cork on the side. I'm not familiar with, actually this is tulip pink. That's what I thought. See, how do I know fabric more than you do? Because you looked at it <laughs> before I did. <laughs> True. But
but um and obviously that opens up and there's just some unique bags in here this one's more of a what do you what do you call this actually that is for this is okay so this i would say is knitting mm -hmm. okay this is actually what you can take if you are going on a sewing or quilting retreat there's somewhere that you can put your your um pens your pins and your whatnots and his color combinations are baller just because you're like i didn't expect like i've never seen some of these things but like i never would have thought of cork cork and then this fabric and a monkey um literally guys there's probably 10 more bags in here but i'll maybe easy just show one more let me see it's like this is the same kind of one like you have that it wraps around and it opens up and it's just these bags are just gorgeous so yeah, these will be uh, <gasps> some of the bingo prizes. Isn't that pop? That is pop, so much pop. fun. These will be some uh, bingo prizes that we'll have once bingo comes up. Charlie, thank you so much. And again, we're going to save some for a surprise for when people win them at our next session, which is going to be the 23rd or the 30th. How which, are we going to communicate that? Um, Instagram? It'll be on Instagram. Yeah, so like if you're interested in the bingo games, uh, watch the stories because that's where we're going to post them. And then for the like the Zoom sew-ins that I do, you want to follow the quilt stream. And the bingo is going to be on the 23rd or 30th. the 30th of April. And again, we'll have two sessions. And I believe that those are Saturdays. So it would probably be after I do my live stream. And then we'll have a quick reset. Quick reset. It'll probably be 25, 30 people each game. Uh, there'll be a sign-up list, all that good stuff. Which there's no cost to join. Uh, we're always welcoming donations because these prizes do go quick. And we give away a lot of them per game. Mm -hmm. So we would love everybody to come and join and support if you can't. Spring bingo. Uh, spring, bing spring bingo. Spring bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Did you guys see my shirt that Aaron got me? I got him that. Was it birthday or when was it? Uh, it was just because you love me. Oh, I think it, well, yeah, it was. I was like, this I was looked just, at it. I was like, that looks pretty cool. He got himself like a, uh, a ton of shirts and got me one because he felt guilty. No, I feel like I have a stain on this, but I haven't worn it yet. So I'm like, oh, he just sneezed. Good feet. Seamus sneezed. Oh, yeah. so cute. But I love it. Even though it's not a Bernina. It's a singer. I know. It I is a total. Um, it is a total throwback, and I absolutely love this. I was thinking, if you, if I have my um, uh, Lady Chips per picture, not by the by the um, oh, no. arm, I would love to have a shirt made out of that. I think it'd be pretty cool, actually. <laughs> I would sell, I would sell those on Fiber Hustle. <laughs> They'd sell like like hotcakes. That like would be amazing. I think it would actually, it kind of reminds me of this. Wouldn't that be a good, a good t-shirt? It would be fun, actually. Make five of them and see what happens. Five, I mean, like, are you guys, I'm ready to take orders. <laughs> Yes. We do have uh, some more codes for you to uh, take advantage of. We're not going to list all of them here, but they are some ongoing promotions. If you're feeling itchy and that credit card has some room um, or the debit card has some room and you want to add to cart, look at the show notes. Um, in the meantime, please reach out to us on, um, in, the show, in the comments below because we love to hear from you. Yeah, we do. We love to hear from you. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram, <laughs> uh, like and subscribe, ring the bell. Yeah, because I don't think a lot of people are getting uh, notifications lately for some reason. Aren't they? I don't think so. So he's like, oh, you had an episode like two months ago? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh. Oh, so. sorry. Your fault. Yeah, exactly. Not ours. <laughs> We hope that you guys are doing well. It is so lovely staying uh, in touch with you. And thank you for all of the nags for people saying, yes. hey, we miss you. Uh, we do where are you? It. Yeah, love it. And so we see you and we know who's paying attention. <laughs> yes. No, uh, great to see, spend time with you. And we'll hopefully see you some other time. <laughs> some other time? That looks so ominous. <laughs> some other time. We'll be there. We'll be there. We'll, uh, you know, just keep us on task. Okay. All right. Bye yeah, for now. Bye. Thanks for watching. Come on. Ha. You gotta get your heart.